Today we're putting Adobe's Generative Extent to the test. Is it really as good as everyone's saying or is it just an overhyped feature? Before we can judge, we need to understand one thing. What exactly is Generative Extent? Generative Extent is a new AI feature in Adobe Premiere Pro Beta that helps you extend your clips seamlessly. In simple terms, it makes your shots last a little longer by adding new AI generated frames. You just need to grab the Generative Extent tool, drag out your clip in the timeline and there it is. A few months ago, we needed to stretch a clip if we wanted to make it last longer, which will result in a choppy frame rate. Another solution is creating a frame hold, but again, this will simply freeze your clip. So Generative Extend sounds like a huge step in the right direction, if it works of course. Now to test it out, head over to the Creative Cloud desktop app and go to your apps. Then on top you'll find the beta apps. From here you can install Premiere Pro Beta and once you've launched it, you have access to Generative Extend. All you need to do is click the tool in the toolbar and drag out the clip you want to extend. This takes a while, probably because it's still in beta. Okay, so let's see what we've got. That actually is better than a frame hold or a stretch video. However, as I'm scrubbing back and forth between the original and the AI generated part, you can clearly see a difference in exposure and that's something you can see every time you use this tool. It's gonna be hard to spot on a clip like this, especially in a video of two minutes. I actually used this tool somewhere hidden in this video, let me know if you can find it. Now what you can do to fix the exposure issue is simply add a cut where the AI clip starts. Then with the comparison view enabled, open up the Luma scope together with Lumetri. Now you can play around and match the clips again. It's still not perfect, but this technique definitely helps. I'm gonna try out some difficult clips, like a low light video shot with an old iPhone, and we're gonna see how AI will handle that. But first, now that we're speaking of AI, Audio, the sponsor of today's video, is an extremely high quality music and sound effects library for creators. The music on here is literally created by music producers who craft music specifically for creators. So no generic stock music like you find on other websites. You can browse the music the traditional way or you can use a brand new feature called Hands AI which was actually released just today. All you need to do is describe your project style or scene in as much detail as possible. When you're done, audio will find songs based on your description. It kind of feels like ChatGPT but then for music. Let's search for cinematic music, intense, strings and build up. There you go, exactly what I needed for the intro of this video. What I love most is that audio remembers what kind of music I like for my videos, which means I can create playlists with music I actually want to use. Their AI tool will recognize my taste and it will find similar songs. No need to browse for hours anymore. I honestly can't imagine going back to this generic stock music, so definitely use the code Premiere Basics for 70% off the audio pro plan. Check out the link down below. Now let's see if Premiere can handle some more difficult shots. Oh, and there has been some misunderstandings about Adobe using your clips to feed the Generative Extent AI, which is not the case. You can safely use your clips with Generative Extent. Here is a shot of me grabbing cake out of the fridge. The yellow part is the AI generated piece of the video. As you can see with the iPhone clip, the result isn't really that amazing. This is at a level that anyone could notice something's wrong with the video. But is this good enough to use in a YouTube video? Probably yes. And even on a low quality clip, this is still quite impressive. Let's try something else. For example, this clip, shot on my Panasonic GH6. And of course, good lightning. The car is moving towards a direction, and this is where the video is cut off. I'm curious if the car will keep moving in the generated video. And yes, the car stays in motion, but what the hell happened to my face? I look a little like James Blunt in here. You're beautiful. I think I know why the AI did this though. I think if my face was visible in the last frame of the clip where we extended, the result would have been fine. Let's try it out on this clip. Okay, this is impressive. I, I still look like a painting. But yeah, all the clips you're seeing at the moment are extended with generative extent. These results are incredible. As you can see on clips where faces aren't the prominent subject, the AI works just fine. Generative extent is definitely a step forward to the future, but it's not quite there yet. And a big Big deal breaker for me is that it only outputs 1080p. So yeah, that's probably because it's still in beta, but ne maybe next year. However, for now, the engine is still too weak and slow. It has to grow first. I mean, for just a few seconds of generated video, you need to wait a few minutes. But that being said, it's still very impressive. I'm really curious to see how this feature will evolve in 2025. But in the meantime, you need to check out what's, what, what's new in 
what's new in Premiere Pro 2025 on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching.